Hey everyone, Shark here with another challenger level 1v1 on the map Twin Beaches. This time we've got Yu Mirenbra playing as the Wehrmacht, locking in the breakthrough battle group. And on the allied side, we have Latouf from Canada playing as the American Special Operations Battle Group. I really like matches lately that feature the Wehrmacht's breakthrough battle group. It's really established itself as the meta, and so I'm always looking for opportunities to see how some of the better allied players try to counter it. Uh, as always, we'll do a build order review and then match recap at the end. Links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. All right, everyone. We're back here on Twin Beaches. At the bottom of the screen, I got Latouf here playing USF in the south. Immediately locking in the Special Operations Battle Group and getting a weasel out. And then at the top, I got Umirin, bruh. Uh, which I'm just going to call him UMB. Uh, and so he's going Wehrmacht. Has not locked in a commander yet. Um, is just gonna get a Ketten crowd out to accompany his Pyo. So, a lot of early capping power, uh, right now, for both sides. So, interesting approach here. So you can see right now, uh, Latouf, kind of capping with both units up on the same side of the map, this high, uh, Muni resource side. Um, meanwhile, it looks like UMB is gonna split the map. And so, alright, he is going Breakthrough. Uh, he's got the MP40 package unlocked for his Grenadiers, and he's getting his first squad of Grenadiers out. Meanwhile, Latouf's got rifles on the way. So pretty standard build so far uh, for both sides. I'm happy to see the Special Operations Battle Group getting used. Uh, and the, the early Weasel, which obviously denies you the pack howitzer later in the game. But it is a really nice capping unit, especially once you get the uh, 30 cal mounted on it. Um, so pretty excited to see how this scales with the, the new Grenadiers. I say new, I just mean the, the buffed Check Grenadiers. Their Panzerfaust is still pretty nasty, even with the range bonus uh, nerfed. And he is upgrading the 30 cal on the Weasel, so he's holding up here, waiting for support from the rifles. He's going to push in to deny the decap. Yeah, I mean, this is smart. You know that the Grens don't have uh, a Faust available to them just yet. MG42 coming out for UMB, and it's going to commit over here as well. Weasel taking some damage, but not a ton. MG42 is going to change that. And the rifles are actually not going to support. They're going to slide over to mid, so the Weasel will back up. Um, and I think he will be able to kite these units just to maintain control of the fuel. But eventually the combat power is going to overwhelm that Weasel. Yeah, and he, he backs it away. Another rifle squad coming out. Another Grand Squad for UMB. So I think this is an interesting approach. Because UMB is happy to cap up uh, the alternate side of the map over here with the Ketten crowd while he most of the engagements are over on the high Muni side. Um, and now you see uh, Latouf starting to counter cap both of his rifle squads uh, moving that way. He's already teching uh, the ISC. So very, very early tech. Um, interested to see where he goes. Maybe he's holding out. Uh, for commandos, but he will get a captain here shortly. Scouts get take a lot of damage, but don't drop a model. Weasel's still kiting the Grenadiers. MG42 is going to move up to apply some pressure. The Weasel's auto repair is really, really nice. As well as it has the old version of the comms cables that gives the uh, the resource bonus when capping. Uh, so if you can keep the weasel alive when it's vetted late game, it's really worthwhile. Rifles are going to force off a Ketten crowd here on the uh, left side. And here we go. Here are the MP40 Grenadiers, and they're going to sprint in to close the range of these riflemen. Um, the sprint kind of wears off a little soon, so they're still at, at distance. Captain hits the field, another rifle squad coming out, and a third Gren squad from the UMB to counteract. If this Grand Squad is not careful, it's going to find itself pinched between these two rifles. Yeah, it looks like he's really just focused on holding this fuel here. Meanwhile, Latouf is going to group up his riflemen. They should win this engagement pretty handily once both are in place. Grenadiers don't take a ton of damage, and they're going to use the high ground. Rod counter copying the uh, the fuel here. So this MP40 upgrade 
really only applies to two models. Uh, it looks like. So the, the Grens still do decent damage at range. Uh, three models, excuse me. Alright, he gets the tier one training. You see the veterans he hit all the Grens squads at once. And these rifle squads are going to be forced off or they're going to get bled. This other rifle squad over here. They're going to cap this munitions and they're going to back out. Well, too soft for treating him. He's got the weasel coming over to support. This is around the time you got to start uh, worrying about uh, grenades coming out, Panzerfaust coming out for the Germans. Meanwhile, Latouf gets a, a mortar squad out. It's interesting, it only has two personnel. I wonder if that's a bug. Weasel and Scouts kiting these Grenadiers. UMB has locked down this center fuel, but BAR's on the rifles now, and a rifle squad's gonna flank this MG42. The Tooth has him cut off. So interesting, lots of map control, uh, but not a lot of resources for either player. Yep, Weasel's gonna keep backing up. That's the thing, with these Grenadiers, you have to pay attention to the range of the Panzerfaust. Man, Gren's just eating bullets, but not dropping any models. Rifle squads getting knocked down quite a bit by the MP40s. And finally, the Grens will retreat. Meanwhile, rifle squad up on this uh, Kettenkrod, and those BARs are going to do a lot of damage. The UMB forced to make a full retreat across the map. BARs can't finish the Kettenkrod. M29, Weasel here. So it looks like Latouf is going to take some additional map control once he sees the full retreat. There's just the one Gren squad in the middle. Captain capturing up the fuel. Uh, UMB has both of the high munitions points, but he doesn't have a connector for it, so he's not going to get the benefit from it. Looks like he goes Luftwaffe Company headquarters, gets the scout car out. A scout car with the Panzer books is a good counter to the Weasel. Rifleman, looks like they're going to push the cutoff again here. And now a Flak 30 coming out for UMB. Yeah, with all these rifles on the field, I think he recognizes that you need the additional suppression. MB42 is going to set up and try to suppress this rifle squad before it can decap the cutoff. And the Grens will prevent the decap. Scout car push on this other rifle squad. And the Grens are going to keep rolling right on through. Rifles bleed a little bit, but not terribly. And so UMB has is basically regaining control to the center of the map here. Uh, while Latouf used that full retreat to do a bunch of capping uh, and basically consolidate. So he's got a little bit more than half the map right now. Good control. Uh, really good fuel income for Latouf. He's got uh, three of the five uh, fuel points here. One thing I like about Twin Beach is it's a high resource map. And so I think it plays out a little bit more exciting than some of the other uh, 1v1 maps. Weasel repairing in the back. Hit and crowd move around. It is double vet now. And it's going to go for the, the far fuel point. While Pioneers decap the central one. Greyhound coming out now for Latouf. No really hard AT on the field yet for UMB. He does have the Flak 30. He can upgrade the Panzer Boost though on the, the scout car here. MG42 in the back, preventing the rifles from moving up through suppression. It's getting bombarded by the mortar, and it's going to pack up and move. Oh, and there's the Greyhound to force the issue. Those infantry are going to end up retreating in the face of the Greyhound. Flak 30 is on the flank. Good positioning. They're going to end up suppressing the rifles. Oh, the Grens get the Faust off off on the Greyhound. No Panzerbuchs to upgrade. If he can get one more Faust off... Oh, the Flak's going to do a bunch of damage on the flank here. And the Greyhound is toast. Rifles almost go down trying to support. And now Jaeger's on the field for UMB. 
and P40 Grands force the captain away. Rifle sparring with another squad of Grands here in the middle. And the Black 30 will set up. They do manage to get into green cover. Another Greyhound on the way out for Latouf. Weasel capping up the far side of the map. So still back and forth with the fuel control. We're losing a territory point. Enemy contact. Ren's sprinting to try to pressure the weasel here. Might have popped the sprint just a little early. Uh, I know he wanted to prevent a lot of the like the full cap of that flag, but if he had popped the sprint just before they entered sight, he might have been able to catch the weasel and get a Faust off. 221's going to go hunting for the weasel as well. Greyhound is also going to move out uh, to the south side of the map. And then <laughs> actually changes his mind and reroutes into the middle. Latouf unlocks the anti-infantry loader, which is actually a great counter for this current build by UMB. Um, I, I have not seen what the Flak 30 will do to the loader, but everything else is very infantry and team weapon heavy. That infantry anti-infantry loader will do quite a bit of work. The UMB setting up here in the center. Grenadier is healing his infantry units. Good use of the medkit ability. Um, meanwhile, it looks like Latouf's setting up on the flank to how to make a push for this fuel and then wrap around. Rifles in the middle, forced off. I guess he hasn't teched grenades. Now Greyhound's going to push on MG42. Mortar's going to get pushed back by the Grenadiers. Greyhound pursuing the 221. The Flak's going to come up to support it. And the Greyhound's going to have to back off. The Gren's more than a match. Uh, two squads of MP40 Grenz, more than a match for one squad of rifles at a time. Uh, and so Latouf is basically forced to back up, and UMB will be able to consolidate here. And now he's going to go pressure this rifle squad on the VP and the scout squad. Assault grenades coming in. Rifles hop over the sandbags. Nice dodge. Um, they're going to soft retreat with the Greyhound in support. Now the Jaeger Shrek's coming. Weasel and Kettenkrad sparring on the opposite side of the map. Oh, the Greyhound's gonna have to move quickly to stay away from the Jaegers. One more Shrek shot will do it. Rifle's forced to retreat based on low health. And the Greyhound's gonna go all the way into the back. Uh, he didn't tech MSC. There you go. He's getting the engineers out. So, teching ISC, he doesn't get the free repair point. And now we see the Warble Wind out from UMB. So. Pretty meta build here, Luftwaffe company build, um, and no real hard AT. Oh, a second Werble immediately? Wow, that was quick. That's the rapid vehicle production. Those two Werbles together are going to hit much harder than if you had gotten one out at a time. But two basically has enough manpower for an AT gun, but it's going to take a while to build. And so if he doesn't see these Werble wins until they hit at the same time, it might be overwhelming. Greyhound's short on health. Captain sparring with Jaegers in the center. The captain is not going to win that fight. Rifle sprint in to join, and here's where he'll see the dual Werbel wind. Oh, and he immediately retreats. I think if I'm if I'm UMB, I got to drive it home with these Werbels now. You see the AT gun now in production for Latouf, but you have to make use of the advantage that you have. Weasel was thinking about doing some capping on the side of the map, but we'll back away. Greyhound still fighting, trying to run down this Kettenkrod. Kettenkrod's too fast, and he'll back away. Latouf doing a good job maintaining basically half of the map, despite the fact that there are two Werbelwinds on the field essentially unopposed. MG42 sets up in the center, and now the Warble wins. I guess maybe he's making the play for both fuels. Oh, this Weasel could get burned down here quickly. Yeah, there goes the double vet Weasel. That's a shame. Rifle's on the way to support. One squad gets suppressed by the MG42. The other's about to run into the Warble pack here. Ooh, assault grenades in on the rifles are forced back out. They hop back into the garrison. Now the grenades are clear. 
AT gun gets a shot off on the Whirlwind. But it's gonna back off. The rifle's in the middle here at risk of getting burned down. Oh, the mortar is a lot of damage to MG42. So the rifles will get away. Now, big push here with rifles, captain, and a Greyhound supported by an AT gun. The Werbles can't challenge without taking additional damage from the M1. Second AT gun coming out now for Latouf. And it feels to me a little bit like the moment for UMB to really leverage those Werbles has passed. Uh, they're still good, um, but with eight, multiple AT guns on the field, they're not going to be able to really exploit their tech advantage like they could have a minute or two ago. Second AT gun hits the field. And now you look at Latouf's fuel, you imagine he's got to be going for tier four. Yeah, now the bulldozer or Hellcat. If I, I, I probably think Hellcat, to be honest, to counter these uh, Whirlwinds. He doesn't have the 76s or the EZ8 available to him. Greyhound getting whittled down by the Black 30 here. He's not going to be able to keep that up. So good defensive position by UMB, the Flak 30, the Grenadiers, the 221, and then he's got his Werble pack. I'm going to coin that phrase. That, that's going to be a thing. Uh, in the middle here, the fight and Dolphin infantry, supported by an MG42. First AT gunshot comes in. Second. So both Werble eats a shot, and here comes anti-infantry loiter in the middle. MG being targeted. It's going to retreat straight away. Yeah, there's a lot of anti-aircraft on the field between these Warble winds uh, and the Flak 30. The loiter's still hanging in there. Grens push off the rifles in the middle. Sounds like one of the loiter planes has gone down now. In the second as well. So the two Werbles plus the Flak 30 do a fairly good job of defending the map uh, from that loiter. I wonder if you time that with the push, like you push on the Werbles uh, while the loiter's in effect and they prioritize the aircraft, uh, if you could get an advantage here. Another rifle squad out on the field now for the two. They got in close on the Flak 30. Without getting suppressed. Oh man, but if they hang out here too long, these Grens are going to do some damage. Werbles try to come into support. Greyhounds in place. Oh, double AT gun set up. Second shot on the 221 whiffs. But these two AT guns will be dangerous for the Werbel wins. And they're going to continue to creep up with rifles and a Greyhound spotting for them. Here comes MG42. First shot hits on the Werbel. Second shot. He uses the sight blocker. And now Gren's pushing up against the AT guns. Oh. I like what Latouf was doing there. That was a that was a good play to try to get additional shots off on the Werbel. AT guns still in the rear set up. For some reason, this Werbel on hold fire. I imagine maybe a misclick. Oh. And Latouf making a really strong push in the middle. Greyhound clears the MG42. Flak not doing enough suppression. It gets cleared. He's going to lose a rifle squad to the Werbles. Yep. AT gun in the rear doing damage to the Werblewind. They do steal the MG42. Assuming the Jaegers don't clear it on retreat. Werble coming back up. Grenadier is putting pressure on this AT gun. Oh man, if UMB can clear these AT guns, then the Werbles can, can push even at partial health. Mortar crew in trouble here. Grenades hit. Mortar crew is gone. Anti-infantry loader coming in. Grenadiers take some hits, as do the Jaegers. <laughs> and that little piece of stone castle. But both of these Werbel wings doing a lot of damage uh, to the loader. Rifleman trying to recruit this AT gun. Plane gets shot down and crashes behind the Grens. The AT gun, if it, I'll be impressed if it gets recovered. Either way, he's pulled it back far enough that if it gets recruited again, he can pick it back up. Jaeger is eventually forced to retreat. Big, big engagement here. 
Oh, now you've got the Kettenkrod providing a lot of sight through the middle. So even though Latouf has kind of a resource advantage right now from a map control point of view, with the, the cutoff uh, and the central fuel here, uh, otherwise kind of split down the middle, um, I feel like UMB got away with a much better series of engagements. Um, and I think here, just based on the CPs, he's got six left. Uh, I don't see the tier four, so I imagine he's holding out for the tiger, and he's going to try to play this little flop of company into the into the breakthrough tiger. Meanwhile, Latouf constructing his tank depot. He's got 150 fuel, uh, so he can either invest into his infantry, uh, maybe survivability or advanced logistics, or start getting armored vehicles out on the field. MG42 now suppressing Grens in the rear. Whirlwinds doing a lot of damage to these riflemen. If they're not careful, oh, they lost a lot of health there. Yeah, and they go down on retreat. To the Grenadier squad, I think. The three car 98s plus three MP40s make them help them scale very well, even at mid-range. Scouts take a lot of damage as well. You can tell Latouf trying really hard to use soft retreats. Uh, but in some cases, it's not working out for him because it's basically extending the length of time his units are getting shot at. Captain uh, Mortar Rounds coming in to clear the Grenadier so he can start recapping. And I think Latouf's starting to feel the VP pressure here. 480 to 244. Oh, MG42 suppressing that Gren squad. Rifle's going to move up to try to do some additional damage. Greyhound going hunting for the Kettenkrod. Have to worry about this Gren squad that's now been updated, upgraded with the BAR and the Jaeger tracks. Warble's going to push on this squad down here in the, in the uh, north. Oh man. It looks like they're not going to pursue that rifle squad. Very, very hurt. Latouf does have an ambulance or a med tent. In the headquarters, though, so as long as you don't drop models, not the losing a ton of manpower. All right, now you've got a Sherman bulldozer on the way out. It'll do really well against the infantry and all these team weapons. Uh, I guess kind of a soft counter to the Werble. Neither one will hurt the other very much. Good MG42 positioning forces off the push on the VP. Greyhound in place to support Captain. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Captain gets annihilated between the Flak 30 and the Werbles. Alright, Bulldozer on the field here. Now, I think this is a pretty good counter to the Jaeger Strikes. If you get a couple, it's kind of an RNG focused engagement, but if you get a couple good shots off, you can do a lot of work. Continuing to spar over this other VP, AT guns in the back chunk down one of the Werbles almost nothing. Jaeger's here in an ambush position. I love this. Oh, and the Jaegers are going to end up repeating, retreating. UMB trying to keep the VP pressure on by capping up this northern VP. Ooh. The Faust comes in on the Greyhound. And then the Whirlwind here to flank. Boom. Greyhound finally goes down. One model goes down. Oh, the MG42 gets cleared by the Grenadiers. Two shots from the M1AT gun, but both Whirlwinds are going to be okay. German Bulldozers are trying to relocate to assist in the push, uh, but it's very slow, and now the Grens are going to chip away at these AT guns. Meanwhile, Latouf making use of the assault operation to try to cap some of these VPs up. Yeah, the Whirlwind's not doing a ton of damage the bulldozer. AT gun chips away again. Here's the flak 30, which will also not fare well against the bulldozer. And now a Hellcat coming out for Latouf. Uh, and I think, yep, that's the tiger for UMB. So this is what he was stalling for. Uh, and this is going to be a nice, solid counter. The Panzerbuxa on the 221 doing some damage to the Bulldozer, but he can't take another hit from that 155 round. Now he's trying to clear the MG42 with the Panzerbuxa. 
Another rifleman spotted out on the field to replace the ones that are lost. Kettenkrad is spotted by the scouts and taking some damage. Tiger joins the Werble pack on the north side of the map. UMB trying to recapture some of these VPs. He will eventually get back. So he's got two of them leading the balance here. Tiger pushing back through the middle. The tooth has the two AT guns and the Hellcat now. Uh, but there's a lot of support for that Tiger. Has he not seen it yet? Well, he will now. First Tiger shot comes in on the bulldozer. Uh, here we go. Hellcat gets a shot off on the Tiger. Tiger's going to refocus. It takes away almost half of the Hellcat's health. Black and the Werble Pack are going to protect this VP on the north side of the map. Some repairs to the bulldozer, but now the AT gun's in support, and it looks like Latouf knows he has to force off. Oh, here's the AT gun's going to face up with the Tiger. Here's the anti-infantry loiter. It doesn't matter. The first AT gun gets knocked down by the Tiger. The next shot bounces off the frontal armor. The Werbles and the Flak already doing damage to the loiter. Is there a are a good counter. So the Jaeger Shrek's at risk here. They're going to continue to hunt for the Hellcat. Oh, Tiger does a lot of damage. Oh, Jaegers almost go down to the Sherman Bulldozer. Man, that loiter at this point with these two Werbelwins on the field is basically a waste of munitions. Well, the two are able to recover this Northern VP, uh, but he does take a little bit of damage in the process and needs time to repair and recover. And now the Tiger's coming back down to force the issue. More rifle squads about to hit the field. Warble in taking a couple of AT gun shots. But AT gun gets cleared by the Warbles. Now there's only one on the field again. Tiger tries to go for it, but the shot gets blocked by the ground. And Latouf is going to have to back up and reorganize. Uh, repair his vehicles and, and kind of reset for another shot at this. He's unlocked the whiz bang, but I don't know if that's the answer here. Even if he clears some of these infantry and team weapons, the two Werbles uh, with the Tiger is more than enough to deal with the two Army, which has taken some hits. I think he's built a total of five or six rifle squads now. The lack of veterancy really, really hurting him as he uh, recoups his losses. A T gun in the middle gets destroyed by the armored vehicles. And now the infantry advantage for UMB is starting to show. Um, he's able to kind of push with these grenadiers against all but the most vetted riflemen. And Latouf can't hold the field with his infantry. Oh, Tiger takes a shot at the scouts and it just hits so hard. UMB also unlocked the incendiary bombing run, the last of his command points. So. If for whatever reason the tube does bunch up, uh, he's at risk of getting hit with that ability as well. Infantry engagement on the south side of the map. Uh, Bulldozer is going to come into support. One AT gun held in reserve. And this is good, I think. This is probably the counter to the Tiger, is to try to avoid it by making use of superior mobility. Not that the Bulldozer is all that much more mobile than the Tiger at this point. But it looks like UMB... Pretty happy to hold the center of the map in this North VP. Latouf trying to counter it by taking uh, the VP on the southwest side of the map here. And now the Werble pack is moving. One's still on hold fire. And I, I'm interested, I, I wonder if that is a, a misclick, um, like a fat finger on the grid keys, or if he's doing that deliberately. It, I would say if I saw both of them with the hold fire, then I would think it was deliberate, but just one at a time. Uh, feels accidental to me. Another Jaeger squad out for UMB. And he is Popcat now at 99. Now the Tiger is going to protect MG42 in the middle. Here comes the Bulldozer. And the Werbles pushing against the Rifles. And the Hellcat in place. Hellcat focused on the Werble but misses the first shot. I have to say, that is my least favorite thing about the Hellcat. I feel like it whiffs on long-range shots far more often than you would think it would, especially given its role as a, as a long-range tank destroyer. 
It can make it very frustrating to use. Um, oh, this AT gun is done. Tiger knocks most of the crew. Grenadiers finish it. Hellcat shot bounces against the Tiger. And now with the AT guns cleared, the Tiger has got to feel free to push the issue. Assault operation used. Cool. But engineer squad dies in the north trying to take that VP. Cool. One rifle squad, it's going to get away. The capture assault operation also includes bonuses, uh, makes the units harder to hit. Oh, nice shot from the bulldozer. There's a lot of work to that Gren squad. Not going to clear it. Yep. And that rifle squad forced to back away by the Warble Winds. Second Hellcat hits the field. The sight from the cat crowd really important in providing UMB that information. <laughs> Tiger backing up. The Hellcat says, I don't care. I don't need my front armor. It's fine. I just want to finish this bulldozer. Oh, bulldozer's still alive. For some reason, shot didn't hit. Tiger at risk of going down here to the Hellcats. Whirlwind's focusing. Oh, Tiger does get knocked out by the Hellcats. They trade one of them. Holy cow. If you're looking for a chance to turn this around for the two, that's probably it right there. Because you know, at this point, there's no tier four for UMB. So he's got to wait another full three minutes for that Tiger to come out. Getting crowd still hiding in the center. This bulldozer, I don't know how it escaped. It has to have literally no health. Three, three HP out of 840. And here comes the Jaegers with Grenadier support. Oh, another engineer squad goes down to Grenadiers. And now Latouf's hurting because he needs to repair his vehicles, but he doesn't have any engineers on the field anymore. So big trade for the Tiger, but Latouf's army composition is still not ideal. And apart from the lack of heavy armor, UMB has a lot of units on the field and can put on a lot of pressure. Here come the assault grenades, but they're going to whiff. Rifles would have been a good spot to kill this uh, Grenadier squad, but the Werbles are here. And if they chase, they can do a lot of damage on retreat. That's a lot of models to go down. Man, once those Whirlwinds get veterancy, they just chew right through infantry. Yeah, and UMB understands the game at this point, so he is trying to get that triple cap going. Less than 100 VPs left for Latouf. Uh, and, and so if UMB can force the issue with the triple cap, he won't even need uh, his second Tiger to come out. The two's problem, meanwhile, is manpower. He's got Ability enough ready. fuel for multiple Hellcats, but he has to invest in engineers to repair his vehicles. He has to invest in rifles to hold the map. And all those units bleed in engagements. You see the KD, 148 to 91. Um, so even though UMB lost the Tiger, he has won the vast majority of his engagements and done a lot of manpower damage to Latouf. Uh, and the, the Allies really not designed to play at a manpower disadvantage. Assault operation popped here again to get a rapid decap. Uh, coincides on the opposite side with the scouts, so he's at least flipped the VPs to a neutral balance. Now he's taken over. So he's relieved the VP pressure for now. The rifle squad in this building is in danger. They're gonna have to vacate the building at some point. Grim and Bulldozer sparring with Jaeger Shreks here. Oh. Rifles at risk of going down here to the Grens. Well, one model left. And they'll get away. Uh, meanwhile, the Sherman Bulldozer are at significant risk of going down to the Jaeger trucks here. Won't be able to trade out squad, but the Faust are coming in. One Faust, engine crit. One more. Oh, but here come the Werbles. No use of the white phosphorus rounds yet. Doing some damage. The Hellcats here to protect the bulldozer. So bulldozer will survive. Hellcat will force off these verbal winds. Hellcat taking some damage from these verbal winds, even without the white phosphorus rounds. Should eventually win this engagement. 
One more shot and this orb will go down. No! Somehow it survives. What Foster's rounds kick? There he goes. One of the Warbles finally killed. And the two fighting for moral victories now at this point, I think. UMP able to cap up the north side VP here, right? With the Flak 30 protecting it, as well as the Drens. So, the two pushing on this north VP. Oh, the Aatrex knock at the Hellcat. And I think that's probably going to be it. Second Tiger hits the field. But Latouf doesn't have the personnel to facilitate this cap. And that is the GG. Alright guys, let's move into the, the post-match discussion here. So, starting off with the build order. Uh, Umirin Bra. <laughs> I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right. UMB, uh, Wehrmacht, locked in, breakthrough battle group right away. Right, with MP40 upgrade for the Grenadiers. So he starts with his Pioneer and his Kettenkrod. Then he gets uh, three Grenadier squads out, uh, all with MP40 upgrade eventually, with an MG42 as well in support. Then he texts the Luftwaffe company, goes 221 scout car, Flak 30, a Jaeger squad, and then two Werbel wins um, using the rapid production uh, ability from the Breakthrough Battle Group. So really nice there because he gets both Werbels out pretty much at the same time. They build really, really fast. Uh, then late game, he ends up getting another MG42 to replace the one he lost to Latouf. Gets a Tiger out, uh, a Jaeger squad, and then will eventually get a second Tiger, but it happens right at the end of the game uh, once VPs run out for Latouf. On Latouf's side, playing as the U.S. Special Operations Battle Group, he also locks that in immediately so he can get the Weasel out. Uh, so Scout Squad, Weasel, two rifle squads, then Infantry Support Center, for, you know, obviously Captain comes with that pretty early, ends up with a third rifle. The Mortar, and this confused me during the cast, the mortar he got dropped from the weasel. So it's vet one ability to drop the mortar. Uh, recruit it with the scouts, eventually got it up to full health. But that's why it only started with two models. Uh, then two M8 Greyhounds. I'm not sure if he meant to have two on the field. Or if he just had the one uh, and then the other one uh, was kind of a replacement when it got destroyed. Uh, an engineer squad, two AT guns, another rifle squad. This is when he started to lose infantry. So a lot of these rifles later, I think, were just kind of replacements. We'll talk about that. Uh, the Sherman Bulldozer, uh, and then two Hellcats with two additional rifle squads to kind of backfill on the infantry side. So with this, there are a couple things to talk about uh, that I wanted to kind of highlight. And I want to start by looking at this from Latouf's point of view, because I think he played this well. Um, and eventually, you know, he lost, but I'm, I'm trying to think like, what could he have done uh, without like massively changing the meta or the build order or anything like that. Like what could he have done to kind of change this game around and, and get it going his direction? Um, so the first thing I'd say is like the Grenadiers are, are stronger now, um, especially with the MP40 upgrade than I think, uh, it almost, it almost makes sense, right? Cause when the game first came out, the Grens were almost like the conscripts from Co2, a little bit of like throwaway infantry and now because they're stronger they're more durable they do even their car 98s do better damage at close range and then you swap out three of those with mp40s um, especially as they vet up uh they really go toe to toe and at close range they it seems like they out dps the rifles um i'm not 100 percent sure what isc upgrades uh latouf was able to get i'm sure the survivability would have helped late game but it really seemed like the rifles even with bars were getting outclassed by the triple vet grens and so when Latouf was backfilling the eliminated rifle squads with more rifles, I don't think that I don't think that helped. Um, so the, my first suggestion would be if rifle squads are getting knocked off the field and you're struggling because the Warble winds are kind of chewing your guys up um, and knocking them down a retreat. My first thought would be, even though they're expensive, the commando squads start with higher health, more utility, better long range damage. And, and the Grens are specialized at short range with MP40s. So if you're going to backfill those rifle squads, maybe consider using the commandos. Um, you can always swap them to bazookas. The werewolves can't dive them as easily. Um, that'd be kind of my first thought. He didn't use the commandos, but he had them in the battle group. The next thing I have is, uh, like we talked about in the cast, it's a high resource map. And Latouf, I felt like actually had good fuel control. Um, at one point, he was floating well over 150 fuel. And so, you know, he, he had the second Greyhound. He invested it into a couple of AT guns. With the Werbles on the field, um, even the AT guns are kind of at risk if they get on the flank. Uh, he did a good job of keeping his two guns together, but far enough apart that like artillery wasn't going to displace them. Um, but it, 
I would start to worry about, especially after the first couple engagements with those two Werbles, like what's coming next? You've seen the MP40, so you know the Tiger is an option, but also like what about like a plain Panzer IV or a Brumbear? Like that could be devastating uh, and can do a lot of work against the AT guns. So my kind of next thought there would be uh, instead of maybe uh, more AT guns, maybe tech up and go for Hellcats early or Hellcat before the Bulldozer. And then, or the other option being a Chaffee, that mobile AT to go around and kind of press um, against the Warble Winds uh, and just kind of keep them at bay. If you keep them bottled up in the center, um, I think there's a chance you can turn one of those engagements your way or drive them into your AT guns. This map, um, I, I like it, but it basically has three hard lanes because of the sight blockers. You're either in the middle or on uh, either one of the beaches. Uh, and it makes it really hard for slower vehicles to move back and forth. Um, so this makes the bulldozer, I think, a little bit tougher to use on this map. You saw it kind of it shifting around becomes difficult. And when UMB was so effectively like hard pointed in the center, especially once the tiger came out, now every time you try to traverse from lane to lane, you run the risk of allowing yourself to get flanked, opening up your side armor, allowing those grens with the sprint ability to get around and faust you. Um, and so it makes it much more difficult to to be mobile, which is kind of how the USF really like to play, right? The Hellcat packs, the Shermans, the rifles, you, they like to play with a lot of pressure and uh, and you put yourself at risk there. Um, I think this, ma this match does a good job of kind of demonstrating the risk of the allies, especially the U.S. forces getting on the back foot. Um, U.S., unless you have the 76 mil Sherman through the mechanized support center, you have the easy eight. Um, they don't have really heavy late game armor that can take hits uh, and kind of scale with the Axis armor, especially a Tiger uh, or the Panther if he'd gone mechanized. So in my mind, like once you're on the back foot VP wise, uh, it becomes really hard to claw it back and you need to start having engagements, not even be 50-50 trades. You need clean trades going your way to kind of to kind of claw back. Um, and so that, that makes this really difficult when you give up that early map control. I think that's the biggest weakness of the USF against really good breakthrough Wehrmacht play. Because the early advantage you have from being able to spread rifles out across the map gets deleted essentially by the MP40 Grens. They're going to win those those one-on-one -on -one fights close up and still do damage at range. Um, so really kind of tough to counter. Uh, I've, I've been looking for matches that show like effective counters to the breakthrough battle group. Um, but even then, it uh, mainly comes down to a lot of like really clean trading on the allied side or just overwhelming pressure uh, before the, the Wehrmacht side can tech up. A um, couple things for, for UMB that I wanted to highlight. Um, the good, really good use of the FLAC 30, uh, especially towards the end of the game, combining the FLAC 30 with a Gren squad on the North VP. That means that Latouf can never just send like one squad or or a squad with a Greyhound over to try to cap that up. The Flak 30 is going to chew away at it. You got some suppression. You've got the Gren squad for uh, for damage to recap and then to also Faust vehicles. So that that was a nice little pairing, and he doesn't really have to micromanage that at that point. He can just kind of watch it and maintain that VP, uh, and it does a lot of what he's looking for. Um, one thing I, I thought it was effective for UMB is probably a little frustrating for Latouf. The two Werbles plus the Flak 30 like just deleted the special ops anti-infantry loiter um, a couple of times. I think he called it in three or four times. And it, after the, the first or the second, like, man, this is just a waste of munitions. The planes get one strafe in and then they're, the first one's already shot down. And then after the second strafe, the second shot down. Um, this is a little bit of a frustration for me from a balance perspective. I feel like uh, the Axis uh, through the Whirlwind and through the Flak Filling have vehicles that do a lot of damage to anti-air, but they're also so effective on the ground and against infantry with the suppression. And the allies don't really have a counterpoint. Like the, the Polston just doesn't do much against infantry. And honestly, doesn't do much against the air units either. Um, and then same thing with the quad mount half track. It's good against infantry that can't defend themselves. But as soon as you start seeing the soft counters in there, the Panzer Jaegers, the Jaeger Shreks, uh, it's pretty much worthless. And so I would like to see, I think, a little bit more balance uh, towards towards the kind of the air battle um if you guys have ever played other rts's like war game it's pretty standard like hey i'm going to invest in some anti-air to protect my units and it's an investment that you make and it kind of sits in the rear and you protect it like that i get that i get completely but to have vehicles that do it all starts to get really frustrating late in the game um and you nullified one of that battle group's greatest abilities 
with vehicles that are designed to defeat infantry, right? So um, I think a little bit frustrating. Honestly, it worked out for UM for UMB. I think if you're playing that, like keep that in mind, right? Having those double A units on the field is really effective. Uh, but it's something that I hope that Relic looks at kind of in the next patch. Um, other than that, I thought kind of really good play uh, from both sides. The the side capping in general, like in the micro, was really, really good. Um, good use of like grenades and dodges. I, I'm thinking back to a couple of things like rifles vaulting over a wall to avoid a grenade, uh, grenade assault from the grenadiers. Um, so really impressive play all the way around. Uh, big thanks uh, to uh, Ymir and Bra for sending this one in. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's all I got. Everyone uh, have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.